I would be happy to attempt sexual relations with you, Lieutenant. I'm actually just sort of working on myself right now. Uh... Hi, I'm Rose at Three Digitalis and I just watched the latest episode of The Orville, Krill. The writing team of Seth MacFarlane and David E. Goodman managed to walk a the fine line between acceptable comedy and believable drama while giving us an insight into the Krill Society. Till now the Krill were presented the way the Klingons were in the original series. Those are the villains. Oh, frankly, I never liked Earthers. They remind me of Regulan bloodworks. <laughs> Easy lad. You ought to be more forgiving. If the plot needed faceless swarms of bad guys or an enemy ship to shoot at, the Krill filled the role. This episode gave us a broader look into the Orville's universe, and let us look at the planetary union through the eyes of multiple Krill people from children to adults. Spoilers in 3, 2, 1. The Orville is called to stop an attack on a new union colony by a Krill battleship. They engage the battleship. Gordon leads the battleship into the atmosphere of the colony world, using the atmosphere to blind the battleship sensors until Bordis can launch all of their missiles at it. Fire torpedoes. The battleship is destroyed except for a single Krill shuttle. To the victor, go the spoils. Union Command orders Ed and Gordon to go undercover using hologram generators to disguise themselves, infiltrate another Krill battleship, and find a copy of the Krill's holy book, the Okana. Which one of you is Bordas? I am Bordas. I want you to eat my weapon. What? <laughs> <laughs> Ed and Gordon are welcomed onto the Krill battleship with open arms, crew inviting them to worship and eat with them, allowing them free access to the entire ship. In the ship's chapel, they meet teacher, Talia, whose brother served on the battleship the Orville destroyed. In the chapel, Ed and Gordon, disguised as... Hi, I'm... Chris. And this is... Devin. Learn how. Inhuman we are to Krill society when a severed human head is used as part of the prayer service. Ed and Gordon attempt to sneak into the chapel and copy the Okana twice. The first time, High Priest Sazeron finds them and they escape. The second time their holographic costumes fail due to the chapel's proximity to a prototype missile. That doesn't look friendly. It's not. It's a bomb. They invite Talia to dinner. Well, you're kind of our only friend on board this ship. We just thought we should get to know you better. A wonderful idea. Sorry, it smells like dudes in here. Learning that the missile will be tested on a Union colony world and can wipe out all life on a continent. They plan on sabotaging the ship to destroy it and missile but the black and white plan goes gray when they learn that the ship houses a large number of children. Bright star right there. Right there. Well, if you look to the left of it with a really powerful telescope, you'd see the star at the center of Earth's planetary system. I'll stop there. Even knowing that the showrunners probably aren't going to kill off any major characters this early in the series, I still feel a sense of urgency and worry for all of the characters we've been introduced to. The Krill ship and actors present themselves outstandingly giving a believable representation of a culture that is literally alien to us. McFarlane and Goodman managed to insert a few tough questions into the plot. How much do we know about those we consider our enemies? How do you make peace with the people that don't recognize you as a person because their faith says you aren't? As with previous episodes, Orville doesn't present these questions openly. Instead they occur to you in passing, 
reminding me of the Deep Space Nine episode in The Pale Moonlight. A straightforward mission becomes complicated and black and white moral decisions become shades of gray. I lied. I cheated. I bribed men to cover the crimes of other men. I am an accessory to murder. But the most damning thing of all, I think I can live with it. This episode was centered around Ed and Gordon and the characters bring their charm to the story. Our heroes present an awkward attitude towards their mission especially compared to the very serious background of their Krill crewmates. While it does lighten the tone of the episode, it does come across as overdone sometimes. I'm giving this one a 7 out of 10. It could have been better, but I'm not sure how. I'm truly enjoying the Orville. A black comedy about people dealing with work, interpersonal issues, relationships, and trying to keep it together one day after the next. Thanks for watching. This was Rose at 3 Digitalis. Please like, share, and subscribe.